Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Monday, January 4th at 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2020. The models are in, and Michigan is going to get it. But the big story, snow squalls possible in southeast Wyoming with 6 to 12 inches coming to the west just tonight. Keep calm. It's boom time. Another 10 inches of snow expected on Snoqualmie Pass Monday, which was their fun day, and they got it. Let's check out the snowfall analysis for the country. Last 48 hours, we can see a nice pocket of snow up in the northeast, especially in the Poconos and the Catskills, where they picked up 8 to 12 inches in some of the highest areas. Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis, has the largest area of snow in the continent over the last 48 hours. Heads up, Texas, Oklahoma picking up quite a considerable amount in the center of the state. But the big story is snow moving into the northwest. It's going to get heavy over the coming days, especially down through, yes, you, you heard it, the Sierras. Heavy snow moving into the west. Idaho is going to be the big winner in the coming days. But you can see quite a nice amount of snow in the northern Rockies. Big winner over here. Yes, take a look. Just east of Seattle, a foot or more in the mountains. Well, in Snoqualmie, picked up another 10 today. Hey, hey. Snow conditions are leading to unusual avalanche danger in my home state. Uh, it's all over in the Rockies here. You can see levels at moderate to considerable, especially just north of here. I'm sitting right there. And this is because heavy snow sat on a crust after a large lull in snow activity. And if you want to know what is so serious about the avalanches, we have an incredible high-def video of an avalanche captured back in 2017, just north of here in T-Ride, which is called Telluride. And, 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 and that noise you hear is the avalanche happening. Ooh. Yeah. Up here. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Boom! Oh, man. Couple more booms. Now, real quick here, what they're doing is they're they're shooting up huge ancient uh, ordinances, m military shells, up in the top to shed off the snow so that people don't die. Let it fly. Oh, there it goes. Woo! Oh my god! What? Woohoo! That's insane! What? What? Woo! Oh my god! Holy macaroni! What? <laughs> Oh, it's still going. That is insane. Definitely dab worthy. Now, snowfall alert issued per, for parts of the south. Can you believe it? I can. We have the models. We're going to show them to you in a minute. Despite the lack of Arctic air across the lower 48 states during the first full week of the new year, it's going to rapidly shift. Storms will continue to brew and cause trouble in the forms of snow and not just across the northern areas. So... AccuWeather meteorologists are keeping an eye on a storm that will emerge from the northern Rockies during the middle of the week. Not only does the system have the potential to bring accumulating snow to parts of the south, but it might also take a northward jog to the Atlantic coast this weekend. And we're going to check those models in just a second. Crazy lack of snow in Michigan in the next 10 days. But after that, game on. Let's check the models real quick. Here we are uh, today. And let's just pause this. Hello. Here's your Tuesday. Snow moving into the Sierras, like I said, as well as Oregon. More heavy snow and Snoqualmie in those regions in the mountains in Washington State. Idaho is about to pick up a blistering uh, footer snow in a rapid time, and this is going to accentuate. Snow moves to Wyoming and western Montana as well, dumping down into Nevada, parts of northern Utah and northern Colorado. 
while a second system that hits BC drops more snow in Washington State and back into Oregon and then more for the Sierras by next weekend. There's your Saturday. Now let's go check a look, take a look at that southern storm. That's going to begin sometime Friday morning here. Take a look at the Asheville area as the centerpiece. Asheville, North Carolina will be, yes, they're, they're going to get the most. Well, actually, it looks like Brevard County, which is where the movie Deliverance was made, right down there in the middle of nowhere that you ever want to be. So that system followed by a third system on the 10th of January at the end of the weekend, which might bring some snow to northern Louisiana. I've been seeing this on the radar for the last seven days worth of runs. So, hey, Louisiana, if you've been looking for snow, you're going to be picking it up for the first time in a while. Yeah, coming right here on January 10th through the 11th. So heads up there. And the models are looking pretty snowy for the upper tier, including Wisconsin, northern tip of Indiana, uh, I'm sorry, Illinois and Michigan. Top Knots Boyhood Home. Take a look. Taking the brunt of that lake effect. Effect. So Michigan's going to be picking up the snow they need in about a week and a half. Heavy snow buries parts of northern Italy. My goodness. Here's the general view after heavy snowfall in Zapata on January 3rd. European weather forecasters say over six feet of snow, two meters, fell early Monday in parts of northern Italy's alpine regions. And that's just Monday, which was their fun day. There's more snow coming, and I'm sure they're not bumming. These models are showing the quickness of the sickness coming to Scotland and the UK in just the next one, two, three, four days. Take a look. By the time you hit January 8th, much of the UK is going to be buried under the global warming goodness. The north, it's going to be heavy. And then it switches over to the Scandinav. And take a look at Norway packing a punch and Greta Thunberg's boyhood home of Sweden is going to be, ex well, exceeding all record potentials. I don't know what just happened there, but we do not want the new model. Hello. Let's just go back there. Oh, my goodness. It's going to take a decade to parse that up. Oh, dear. Well, and we wanted to show you some of those. Oh, it's all fantastically working. Take a look at these totals coming out on these models. Record snow in the Alps. Record snow in Germany, potentially, definitely in central Spain. It's insane. Heavy snow throughout the entire Italian uh, Alpine region. And then it just keeps going and going, just like the Energizer Bunny. Where are those global warmest when you need them? When meters of snow are falling, when they shouldn't be. Parts of Japan see temperatures dip below minus 30 C and over six feet of snow as they rescue a dog. Well... It was so deep in the last three days, it's now over 10 feet in some regions, that a 67-year-old man died after he was buried by snow after he left his truck, which had become stalled in Yokoti, Akita Prefecture Police said on Sunday. Now, city employees doing snow removal work on a five-meter wide road called 119 at around 1.45 p.m. Saturday reported that a truck was stopped on the road and partially covered by snow. Well, and they did find a man there. Snow was piled as high as 2.5 meters on both sides of the road where he was buried. Prayers go out to him. Seismic update. Boom! 5.1 kicking off in uh, Vanuatu at a very deep depth, 178 kilometers. Could be seeing some surface activity here. We got a rocker over in South Dakota. A very rare quake uh, in the Black Hills. Hello. We've got quakes on the mid-ocean ridge as the earth gets bigger and swells at the ridges. 4.7 in the Iceland region, followed by a 4.8 in the Greenland Sea. More mid-ocean ridge activity down in the Sandwich Island region. And hello, west coast getting a little jiggy, but no quakes of note. Geologist explains the possible cause of the Wichita, Kansas earthquake swarm. He, he says that they're... Uh, in fact, if you watch the video, that there could be faults under Kansas that they're unaware about. Hello, how about fracking? Never mentioned in the article. Dumb schmuck. Reawaken geysers at Yellowstone. And we're talking Steamboat Geyser, which YouTubers have been talking about for two years is indicative of a Yellowstone eruption. And I've poo-pooed it all the way through it because... It's not indicative of anything except normal activity at Yellowstone has been confirmed by 113 scientists around the world, including those working at Yellowstone. So 
There's that, and we can give you a little snippet of that information now. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Poland, the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, and I'm here with the monthly update of Yellowstone activity for January 1st of 2021. That's right, 2020 is finally over. And even though it may not have been the greatest year for many of us, it was a distinctly average year for Yellowstone activity. Now, typically in a given year, we see 1,500 to 2,500 earthquakes in the Yellowstone region. And in 2020, we saw 1,718, so right in that average range. There were also 23 seismic swarms recorded throughout the year in the Yellowstone region. And those 23 swarms were responsible for about 50% of the total earthquakes that occurred during the year. And that's also very much average for a given Yellowstone year. Deformation-wise, we didn't see many changes at all. The Yellowstone caldera continued to slowly subside by about two to three centimeters per year. That's about an inch per year. And that's been going on since 2015. And in the area of the Norris Geyser Basin, we didn't see any deformation at all. And then finally, in terms of geyser activity, the really neat activity was the Giantess Geyser, which is near Old Faithful, sprang to life in August and then again in September with a couple of eruptions. It was the first eruptions in six years. So that's pretty neat for Giantess. And then Steamboat Geyser in the Norris Geyser Basin didn't seem to know what year it was at all. In 2019, Steamboat set a record for the number of eruptions in a calendar year with 48. And guess what? In 2020, 48 eruptions then as well. In 2019, the shortest time period between steamboat eruptions was three days, and the longest was 17 days. And guess what? In 2020, the shortest was three days, the longest was 17 days. So steamboat had a very, very similar 2020 compared to 2019. So average activity over the course of the year, all normal for Yellowstone. Now let's take a deeper dive into what happened during the month of December 2020. The University of Utah seismograph stations, which is responsible... Well, in other words... What we have to say here is there is nothing to see here, Mary Greeley. Nothing whatsoever. Give them a thumbs up there at the USGS. Even though they are the downgrade service, we are subscribed there. Give them some support. Some of those geologists do great work. Worldwide Volcano News Update. There are no volcanoes erupting of note except the ones we've covered in the last few weeks, including Etna, which has, well... Explosive activity is continuing quite spectacularly. Talouis warned about volcanic ash plume that rose to 12,000 feet altitude or flight level 120, moving 15 kilometers in the east direction. So it is increasing in activity quite rapidly. And it's, it's not someplace you want to be uh, vacationing currently. Uh, they were claiming that Obinus volcano also today had some lahars. These are mud flows that came down after some heavy uh, weather activity. Not looking good. Villa Rica also, the lava is remaining alive in the central vent there. So there is definite, and here we see Kluchiskov, an, a pyroclastic flow. So lots of upticks on uh, currently erupting volcanoes as we enter the deep, dark recesses of the Grand Solar Minimum. Now, crustal foundering on the surface of Halimaumau Crater in Hawaii and Kilauea has been reported over the last 24 hours and documented in a 20 times sped up film. And it's quite spectacular. Now, the crustal foundering is simply those slobs of cooled lava, the lake that was uh, or the island that was floating on the surface of that lava lake that started to break apart due to melting from underneath. And there, it's now faulting down and dropping in to the lava lake itself, which is called um, lava lake recycling. So take a look at this. It's completely fascinating. And maybe some of the best uh, documentation of this ever. Fantastic. This is not actually happening this fast. This is 20 times speed, but entire slabs of this cooled lava are dropping into the lake, causing that underneath lava to splash up. Absolutely fantastic. And at the end of this uh, video, we're going to see what it looks like in the nighttime. This is cooled lava slabs or crust foundering into the lava lake. Absolutely fantastic. And then here we get the nighttime view. Who knew how fascinating staring 
into a lava lake could be. So there is that. And once again, let's give a big thumbs up to the USGS. Again, providing us with that information. I'm number 556. What number will you be? Shrinking margins of Greenland. At least 200 coastal glaciers have retreated in the past 20 years. Well, in the past 20 years, we've been accelerating into the grand solar minimum, increased cosmic rays, volcanic activity. And as the Greenland ice sheet itself on the surface, the, the continental ice sheet grows, the continental margin glaciers seem to be shrinking. And what we need to do is we need to learn a little bit about the volcanology up in the Arctic, specifically near Greenland. Here's Iceland, here's Greenland, here's, well, the Arctic Circle and the rotational North Pole. Now, the Arctic is unusually associated with eternal silence, permafrost, infinite snow-covered flat expanses. But in reality, it's a diverse landscape, which includes deserts, rivers, hills, mountains, even volcanoes, and almost not, never ice. <laughs> There's only ice in the winter and during the six to eight month ice build when the Arctic gets covered. Most of it melts away except a small portion every year since we've been alive. But what we should uh, suppose is that these five unknown volcanic vents in the subsurface underneath the Arctic Ocean, etc., have been increasing in activity. And we've seen seismic activity increasing in this region over the last few years. Now, if this is the case, these volcanoes are simply warming the water in the subsurface, which would cause these glaciers to retreat while the ice on the actual surface of Greenland is increasing. And here we can prove it to you. There has never been one single day of melt since the beginning of September on the continent. It's been growing ice massively. And even in the regions where these glaciers are purported to be melting here in this region, ice is building rapidly, very rapidly. In fact, it's been building recently six gigatons a day. And, and just today, it, three to four gigatons of ice built on the surface of Greenland. So those are the facts about what's happening on Greenland currently. Now, researchers demonstrate high fidelity quantum teleportation. You've seen this under multiple headlines, some salacious, some less salacious. And we're looking at more factual scientific headline. Quantum teleportation is essentially for many quantum information technologies, including long distance quantum networks, using fiber coupled devices, including state of the art, low noise, superconductive nanowire, single photon detectors and off the shelf optics. Scientists from Fermilab, Caltech, AT&T, and NASA's JPL, the University of Calgary, and Harvard's University have demonstrated sustained long distance, 44 kilometer of fiber teleportation of photonic quibits of telecommunication wavelengths at 1,536.5 nanometers with state-of-the-art fidelity. You know what that means? Absolutely fucking nothing. Moving on, Portuguese health worker 41 dies two days after getting the spike. Yeah, the jab in the arm from Tzer, whose schmackzine has her father saying he wants some fucking answers. <laughs> so do I. Largest canyon in the solar system has been revealed in stunning new images. We're talking about the Valles Marinaris up on Mars. It's nearly 10 times as long as the Grand Canyon, three times as deep, but how did it form? Scientists are baffled. About 87 million miles from Earth, an even larger, grander abyss than the Grand Canyon cuts through the gulf of the red planet known as Mars. The Valles Marinaris, a system of deep, vast canyons, runs more than 2,500 miles and is three times as deep as the Grand Canyon on Earth. And they claim that they don't know how it formed. Well, we've known for almost a decade. Plasma discharge features on Mars match those on the surface of Earth, including the Valles Marinaris. Now, it's probably from arc mode discharge during a huge plasma event. And it is my supposition that the planetary discharge between Earth and Mars created the same canyon, only in different scale. Yes, we're talking about Timonium Chasm and Ius Chasma. 
And here we see the current flow, the anode and the cathode. So what we would have here in this circular region that's not a volcano, as well as this circular crater, which is not a volcano, is a lightning bolt scar, which connected one planet to the, another. Uh, meaning Mars is connected to Earth through a lightning bolt in close proximity. Almost like static discharge when you touch your cat and they go, meow. Well, when Mars touched Earth, it went meow, and we got the Valles Marineris and the Grand Canyon, Bryce Canyon, Cedar Breaks, and many other plasma discharge features, all in a geologic instant on our planet quite recently. What say you? Electric Universe much? And that's a boom to knowledge. Hey, did you know, for more knowledge, you can find us on Parler, a free speech network just like, yeah, the fake book, only there's no censorship, no lockdowns, no nothing. There's only 657 lucky people following us over here. You could be the next 5,000. Come check us out. Leah Shaper, my partner, is also over here. All the links are below these videos where you can start mingling without the censoring. We're also on Steam It. For all of you snowflakes out there that hate that we're monetized here at Magnetic Reversal News and you refuse to watch a commercial, you need to get a clue, you need to be tech savvy, and you need to realize that on Steam It, right here, every single one of the videos I ever produce has been up for the last four years. I've spent tens of thousands of hours putting up videos here that nobody watches. And they're commercial free. So quit your bitching and figure out how to use the computer. We're also on Library, Rumble, BitChute, and Cetra. And if you can't find us at a place where you're comfortable, well, then you're just a snowflake and you can suck it. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. And that's a fucking boom to all the snowflakes out there that need to get shoveled. Be safe. We love you. There's a lot to do as the world crumbles before your very lives. Be safe. Civil liberties are at stake. And that's a boom. Did we say we love you? Click on one of the boxes for more knowledge.